We're here, at, uh, we're here on the Gold Coast at the moment and we're with John Haynes. We've managed to pull him off a media circuit for just a couple of quick questions. And mate, this is the 640 SF. What a beast. Brand new, brand yeah. new, mate. So this was, this was only just finished before the Sanctuary Code Boat Show. Um, and we've got the brand new side console that's here today, which was finished this morning. Beautiful. So they, they might be a little bit sticky still. So we Haynes, are we Haynes Signature? Or are we just Signature? What are you guys? Haynes Signature. With? Hey Signature, you know, that's, that's our family name and, and there's, a, there's a fair bit of legacy there, 1959 we started, so um, yeah, I think uh, we owe it to, to my dad to be Hain Signature. Signature has sort of four models of consoles now, five of you including the SCB. Where do you sit this guy in the lineup? Like who's this going to suit? Okay, I guess, I guess this will now sit between the 543 and the 788. So there's probably one more spot to fill between this boat and the 788, but that's another story. SF stands for uh, Sports Fisher. What makes it so fishy? Is it a couple of pilchards left in the back by the Missing at Sea guys or what? Well mate, I don't, I don't actually think they use bait. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Tristan knows what bait is. So uh, there's, probably some, there's probably a few jigs in there I'd reckon somewhere. With this boat, what, what we've done is we've, we've carried over a lot of features on the 788. You guys did a lot of work with us on the 788. You saw what we did there. That's been a, a, a great model for us and that's selling really well. There's a lot of features we carried over on the 788. The dashboard styling, the rail. Basic layout though is 543 SF, but pumped up. Big thing is fuel. So it's a, it's, this is a wide range fishing boat. It's 300 litres of fuel. With the Yam, Yamaha Data, 498 kilometre range. It's designed to, to go out to, from you know, 1770, out to Musgrave, fish for four days um, and do it. You know, obviously going to do it in a swag but if the weather's good and, and you've got the fuel range to do it it's the fishing's epic. Upholstery wise what we've got 18 was it, was it 18 different options in terms of colours 18 oh sorry 18 hull colours 19 <coughs> upholstery colours and 10 stitching colours available mm -hmm. this is some serious is RuPaul is he running the uh, the upholstery section down at Signature there? I'm gonna believe you because I don't know if that's right but I'm sure <laughs> if, if, if you've been told that I'm sure it's true but uh, yeah I, I think there is a lot of options in upholstery Speaking of colours, let's talk about the uh, the big elephant in the room. Was it hard uh, bolting on a Mercury after all these years? You know what? No. I um, in in 60 years of business, um, we've been 42 years Mercury and 18 years the other brand. We did a little bit of work with Yamaha pre the other brand, and Yamaha have been wonderful to, to work with. They're just nothing. Nothing's too hard. Mercury being the same, nothing's yep. too hard. They both want our business and they'll both get our business. Um, and this motor, I'm, I'm super impressed with both the brands. I can't believe how quiet this is. Um, it's talky, lineal through the whole rev range. You know, it's, a, it's a really good product. How does she handle from sort of below the waterline aspect? This hull is, it's just this, probably one of the best in our range. This, boat, this hull and the, the 620 BRX hull, I think are two best in the range. Can you give me some numbers? The mint boat, or the snow pea, whatever colour they call it, <laughs> um, it, uh, because I ran that boat, was uh, 43 knots, out of the box, three adults on board, full of fuel, um, fully optioned, and that'll be the heaviest boat in the, that we'll build in the, in the 640s, because the first boat always ends up, for some reason, being the heaviest while you refine your production. Uh, this boat I don't know, because I haven't really given this one, but the boys tell me that the 225 V6 and Yamaha and Merck are identical in speed. There's a couple of Ks difference in it. Weight of the boats, again, I think we're 2.3 tonnes on a trailer. Beam? 2.44 beam and 6.4 and a bit length. How much? This boat, uh, base boat will be 97,000 with a 150 Merck, um, tandem axle brake trailer. Um, that's rec retail. This boat with all the fruit, um, including the min, min coder, lithium ion battery, nine inch screen, um, sound system upgrade, stealth pack, the black stealth pack, um, X deck, uh, 133 as it, as it sits.
I'm going to delve just quickly into my top three highs and my top three lows on this boat. Firstly, the, the thing I love about this boat the most and the thing that like grabs my attention immediately is this big console and big windscreen. It makes the boat feel so much bigger than it actually is. And you can easily fit like three dudes behind here, no worries. It eats a 19 inch screen or two 12s, which is also seriously impressive. I'm not sure, do you know the transducer that um, Tristan's running in this? This one has a pocket mount transducer in it. It's, and it's just a big, I don't know, that's a for Simrad, that's <laughs> Simrad, big, massive thing that costs a fortune. Tristan was saying it's awesome having that sort of that flat bottom. You can have the you can have the transducer actually flatted, fl flush mounted on the bottom. Yeah. And you, when you're turning, you're not losing bottom. So and at full speed, he can actually still get bottom in that boat. Absolutely, because yeah. it's actually part of the bottom of the boat. So what we do is we cut we cut an oval hole out the bottom of the boat. We laminate a a, um, a a pocket to take the transducer. Then the transducer then gets pushed, drill the holes. It gets pushed up underneath into polyurethane or silicon, um, and then it's completely flush with the bottom of the boat. Secondly, the on-water performance is incredible. It's super fast to plane, really nice for the chop, and at rest right now, we've got four guys on here and it's seriously stable. Thirdly, this thing is absolutely built for top water. You've got a casting platform up on the bow with a sweet leaning post, that thing is mint. And then you've got another one down on the, uh, on the stern as well. Once you hook up, move into the boat and you've got good freeboard and tow rails too, so it makes fighting fish awesome. Uh, my, my three lows on this boat, I'd say, would probably number one would be the live bait tank. I mean, what is that? I think you could fit maybe one or two slimies in there, Tristan. Come on, mate. I thought you were involved in the R and D on this I thing. Don't use live bait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these guys are all top order, so the live bait isn't a big thing for them. But down south where we fish, yeah, you could fit maybe one or two big slimies in there, and you'd be maxed out. Um, secondly, I'd probably say rod storage is is lacking. You've got a little bit of side pocket storage and a little bit of rod storage down on the stern here. Um, I know I was talking to Tristan, he was saying he was thinking about putting some, some console mounted rocket launchers in here, which would be awesome. Like, that's all it needs is just a couple on the side or up on the bow. Uh, but yeah, that needs probably another look. And lastly is probably, you've got a huge console, but there's, there's not much storage in there. I know a lot of the, um, the lithium battery bank for the motor guide sits in there and that eats up a lot of the real estate but you've also got a very small hatch with like quite a small aperture. So getting tackle trays or any of that stuff in and out of the console is gonna be difficult. But having said that, you've also got the casting platform which offers heaps of storage. So it's probably not as important, but that was the, uh, the only other thing I noticed. But apart from that, uh, we had an awesome day out here. Even managed to bang a few snapper and jews. So it's been a um, fairly good year I hear in the marine industry. How did um, COVID treat Haynes Signature? Uh, I wish I had have had a crystal ball and and uh, not slowed down production and cranked production up right at the start. Um, you know, we the boys had the boys had four weeks off over Easter. Um, we were all, I think, everyone was a bit petrified of what was going to happen. Um, and it's been it's done exactly the opposite of what everyone predicted, as I think everyone knows. And we've just we can't build enough boats. We're trying to increase production. We're trying to get more staff. Uh, it's 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 a nice problem to have that you. Um, are too busy rather than not busy enough. So never look a gift horse in the mouth. You know, I, I, I'd be really surprised if we're not building one of these a week. And uh, last question, if you could own any Australian boating company out there, which one would it be and why? If I could own any Australian boating company. Any other company, one. Any other one. Haynes. Any other one. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, look, I, I think there's a lot of really good Australian boat companies, um, and, and you know the, the t first two that come to name are obviously Cruisecraft and Haynes Hunter. Um, and I think that the John Haber's done a great job with the Haynes Hunter brand, um, and they build a nice boat. Nathan Nichols is a great boat builder; he's done a great job with that brand. Would I would I buy another fiberglass boat company? No, I don't think so. I'd probably you know we'd have diversification in, as a businessman you'd probably want to be an aluminium boat company. Uh, but that's hard to make money in aluminium boats as it is in fiberglass boats. Um, tough question, mate. I don't know if I have a, a definitive answer for you there. I you know, Quintrex are great boats. Yeah. Look, there's a lot of good boats. Bar Crusher. You could, the, the name, we, we, we're very fortunate and our customers in Australia and are very fortunate. We are really spoilt for choice with great boats in this country. So, you know, we don't really need to look offshore and there is some great offshore boats coming. The Americans built fantastic boats, mm. but we are spoilt for choice with Australian boats.
Oh, mate, I think you named every single Australian boating manufacturer in that, in that answer, so very diplomatic of you. Oh, and thanks, right mate. <laughs>